Hey everyone, welcome back to another Beast of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series review. Well, Wave 2 is here and they are spectacular. Just received my order this morning. I've been playing around with them for a good part of the day. And up first is the Pachyrhinosaurus. This is a review you guys picked. I ran a poll a couple weeks ago to see which figure from Wave 2 you wanted me to review first. And the Pachyrhinosaurus won in a landslide. And this Pachyrhinosaurus is the other big boy from Wave 2. This figure is absolutely huge and it's so beautiful. I can't believe I didn't initially order this with the Kickstarter. It was actually a late addition to my order. I eventually end up getting every figure from Wave 2 and I just absolutely love this thing. Now this figure retails for $89.99 and I'll leave a link to Created Beast Studios in the description if you want to pick this figure up for yourself. So let's move this big beautiful boy off to the side for one second and let's just go over the package really quick. Really love the packaging style of the Beast of the Mesozoic. You have this nice sleeve right here with some beautiful artwork of the Packy. Let's just zoom in really quick and take a look at that nice artwork. You have a nice natural looking insert right here so you can take some nice pictures with your figures and then turn the box over. You got the Beast of the Mesozoic logo on the top. On the side right here, you have a silhouette with Triceratops and the logo again. And on the back of the box, you have some facts about Packy Rhinosaurus and only another picture of that artwork and you also if you move the sleeve you have a nice checklist for all the wave two figures and just like every figure in the wave you do get a collectible card with it with that same artwork that's on the sleeve really well done these cards are nice quality and same thing on the back you get the facts about packy rhinosaurus so enough about the packaging let's take a look at this beautiful beautiful figure all right, let's start with a nice 360 degree view of this Pachyrhinosaurus. Man, this figure is absolutely incredible. I just love everything about this thing. And the articulation is fantastic on here. Nice, tight, solid joints. As you can see, you can pull out some pretty unique poses with it. And the coloration on this thing, it's probably one of the more natural looking color schemes out of the uh, whole series. I know the color schemes can be a little bit wild on these figures. The color scheme on this Pachyrhinosaurus is based off a young red iguana, and I think that looks really neat on here. Love that turquoise blue underbelly and those turquoise blue markings along the side, mixed in with this rusty brown color and black stripe. It just looks really, really nice. And the texturing and dry brushing on the boss on the nose just looks really great. Just all around a absolutely fantastic and beautiful figure, and this thing weighs a lot too. These are solid chunks of plastic. All right, let's just do a couple of quick measurements. This figure is 16 inches long from the tip of the beak to the tip of the tail and just about six and a quarter inches tall to the top of the frill. So the largest specimens of Pachyrhinosaurus are estimated to be 26 feet long. But if you look at the back of the card, David has this listed as a 20 foot long animal. So with those measurements, I'll put this figure somewhere between the 115 to the 119 scale range. So yeah, it does fit nicely in that 118 scale range the line is going for. So let's zoom in and take a look at some of the finer details on this figure, starting with this beautiful head sculpt. Now there are three valid species of Pachyrhinosaurus. This particular figure right here is based off the species Lacusta. You can tell by these horns right here on the frill that is that species. Now there are two other species, Canadensis and Perotorum. Now every Pachyrhinosaurus figure on the market for some reason is based off Lacusta, and that's okay, but it would be kind of nice in the future if David decides to resculpt those two other species heads and throw them on this body or any of the other Ceratopsian bodies just so we can get those other species because, like I said, every Pachyrhinosaurus is a Lacusta out on the market right now. Now getting back to the head, the boss on here is beautifully done. A lot of nice texture in, some nice dry brush on here to bring out all that beautiful detail. Just look at that right there. It has a nice rough feel to it. And then going to the eye, the eye is painted in brown with a black pupil and has a little bit of a gloss coat to give it that wet look. And they have all these nice turquoise markings just sprinkled in all over the frill and head as some nice contrast to that rusty brown coloration. And then going down to the beak, you can see the beak is painted a dark brown color. Just a lot of beautiful scale variation on this figure. Even some large scales picked out in dark brown paint uh, just behind the eye. And let's look at the frill from the front. This figure is so big, it pings into the back of the studio and let's just get a nice view of the front of that just absolutely beautiful looking just love how the horns came out on the frill right here and let's turn it to the side and the mouth can open and i love how the beak can close flush on this figure same thing with the centrosaurus and you actually do get 
an articulated tongue, but we'll get to that a little bit later when we move on to articulation. And then going down to the main body, all these large scales are picked out in black paint and it has some nice contrast against this rusty brown background. You get some nice dark stripes along the top of the back right here. Those large scales along the back are picked out in dark paint. You can see more of those larger scales picked out in black paint. Just really nice feel on here. The scale detail and texture is immaculate and then going down to the front legs you get some nice muscle definition of the front legs you got the correct number of toes the toenails are painted in a glossy black paint and then going down to the hind legs you can see the same thing they have the correct number of toes same thing glossy black paint and then you got that nice turquoise underbelly right here that just looks absolutely beautiful you know it's kind of bright but since it's the underbelly it really doesn't take too much away from the sculpt of this figure and like i said i really love that bright coloration goes all the way down right to the tip of the tail. And then going down to the tail to see more of that nice scale detail and texture on there. Same thing, all those large scales are picked out in dark paint. The thighs are nicely sculpted, some nice heavy muscles sculpted in there. All beautiful scale detail from head to toe on this figure. Like I said, this thing is just truly a work of art. And moving on to articulation, these figures sport 18 points of articulation. So the mouth on this figure can open up about that far. You can see that tongue poking out right there. And like I said, the tongue does have some articulation and can't really get my finger in there. So I just use the end of a toothpick and you can move that tongue around up and down and side to side. Very similar to the tongues that we saw on the Raptor series figures. And the mouth can actually close completely flush. But on my copy, I just have to push that front beak in just a little bit to give it some clearance from the front beak and it closes nice and flush and like I said on some of my earlier reviews of the wave one figures a lot of the mouth didn't close flush but on this Pachyrhinosaurus and Centrosaurus they close and flush and I absolutely love that it really adds some personality to them now moving on to the back of the neck head can rotate side to side and you get a little bit of side to side movement and then the base of the neck right here you can look up about that far and down about that far and let me just turn it forward you can get some nice side to side movement these joints are really tight i actually had to work this figure over for a few minutes before i started the review the, the joints in the legs were really really stiff so you know if you have problems with the joints just you know heat them with a hair dryer run some hot water over them just to soften them up a little bit and i'll go to, down to the front legs front legs can move far, forward that far backwards that far you get about 90 degrees of bend at the elbow rotation at the wrist and a little bit of tiltage going down to the back legs hind legs can rotate 360 degrees and you can get about just about 90 degree bend at the knee you have a little bit of articulation at the ankle joint right here hind feet can rotate and you get a little bit of tiltage and then you have this mid joint right here and it actually has some ability to rotate up to line up the back a little bit more and you can rotate it down and you can also go side to side with that joint and then going down to the tail go up you can go down and side to side and the tails do come separated from these figures in the box you just gotta heat the ends of them up with a little bit of hot water and just force them over that ball joint so enough about the articulation let's move on to comparisons all right first up here it is let's start one of the human figures from the Mattel Jurassic World line. Here it is with Dennis Nedry. Next up here are some Packy Rhinosaur figures from other companies. This one right here is from the Batat Terra line. Here it is with the PNSO Packy. And lastly, here it is with the Safari Limited Packy Rhinosaurs. And like I said earlier, if you look, they all have the little horns on the middle of their frill so they're all Pachyrhinosaurus lacustae and like I said every Pachyrhinosaurus for some reason is this species and I just love love if they've decided to re-sculpt the other species and give us some more figures because I just love giving money to this line <laughs> and here it is with the GR Toys Spinosaurus man this thing is so big I can never get it like fully into shot and next up here it is with everyone's favorite new T-Rex figure. Here it is with PNSO's Wilson the Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> this packy absolutely dwarfs this figure. I can't wait for the Tyrannosaurus series Kickstarter to start. When we finally get 118 scale Tyrannosaurus to pair up with our Ceratopsians, man, our displays are going to look wild and crazy. I can't wait for those. And those figures going to kill me on shelf space and my wallet. <laughs> and next up, here it is with the previously reviewed 
Centrosaurus. And now both these figures are pretty much exactly the same body. But there's something I noticed. David did something kind of cool to kind of, you know, not make every body look exactly the same. You notice the back of the Centrosaurus, it's a lot flatter than the back on the Pachyrhinosaurus. Because if you look right here, there is a seam on the back. And the same thing on the Centrosaurus, there's also a seam. So David sculpted like a different insert to give some of these Ceratopsians a higher back and other ones to give them a flatter back to give a little bit more variation with the body sculpts for these figures because a lot of these figures share the same parts that's a cool way to add some variety to the bodies i just never noticed that until i got both of them in hand and right now i just absolutely love the center source i was so thankful for david for sending me a production sample so i can review it early a couple months ago and lastly let's compare it to some more figures from beast of mesozoic here it is with the new wendy ceratops i will be reviewing this figure next on the channel and next up here it is with the Nasutoceratops, and let me just pull the camera back a little bit. Here it is with the tiny Zuni Ceratops. So this gives you a good idea of the four body types currently available up until wave two. You know, when we get wave three, we're getting Taurosaurus and Triceratops, and those figures are gonna be even bigger than this Pachyrhinosaurus. So pretty cool to see all the different body sizes in a row right, right now besides the last two big boys. So yeah, this line is shaping up to be absolutely incredible. Every time I just pick up one of these figures, I'm just still blown away by how awesome they are. So final thoughts on this Packy Rhinosaurus. If you couldn't figure out by now, I absolutely love this thing. I've loved every figure I've gotten so far in the Ceratopsian series. And this figure is definitely among one of the best. Just love the paint scheme on it. It is immaculately painted, no sloppy paint at all. And these figures have a very premium, you know, finish and feel to them. They're just like a big, heavy, solid piece of plastic. No hollow parts on here. Just a great job all around. And they are definitely worth the higher price point. Like I said, this one retails for 90 bucks and it's absolutely worth that. And I have so much fun messing around with the articulation. You know, most of us collect, you know, dinosaur figures. They have no articulation. So just to take a figure out and pose it in different ways, take it outside, do some nice photography and just have fun and play with them. They're a breath of fresh air to any dinosaur collection. And like I said at the beginning of the review, you can order this figure directly from Creative Beast Studios. Link is in the description. And if you're outside the U.S., Everything Dinosaur will be getting these figures in probably in the next couple weeks. And I'll also leave a link to them in the description. So that will do it for the review. Still have the rest of Wave 2 to work on. So be on the lookout for those reviews in the next coming week or so. Have all the new collecting figures coming in. I just found the new... Jurassic World Spinosaurus at Target this morning. So yeah, I have a lot of new stuff I'll be reviewing soon. So stay tuned. And as always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and it's greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys for the next one.